Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am the Maze Madman. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell so you're aware every time I upload a video. In today's video, we are talking Michigan in a massive, massive NIL collective that could be the start of something great for Michigan football, plus a more a couple more crystal balls in Michigan's favor and Michigan picked up a commit a flip from Notre Dame to Michigan all that and of course I'm upset no disrespect respectfully but disrespectfully it's disrespect don't be disrespectful those vile disgusting Spartans poor little bro man and I'm gonna tell him why I'm mad. That vile, disgusting cesspool in Columbus, the other state, and of course, as always, I'm upset. Let's get right into it. Michigan football and Jim Harbaugh announced a new NIL initiative, a collective, if you will, part of the Hell Impact Collective. This is kind of a subsidiary of that called Empower. And in, in this case, Michigan is trying to have what sounds like a base level kind of salary for every member of the football team with Empower and then also allow those who may have enough star power to go out and strike their own name, image and likeness deals with, you know, independently of of that initial salary. This collective would help them to basically set those meetings up set those things up for them to go out and get nil dollars in that fashion as well so this is massive for the university of michigan It's massive for the football program for obvious reasons michigan lost out for no other reason really on a five-star athlete in the 2023 class nicholas harbour who ended up going to south carolina and it sounds like more than for track more than for football it was about nil and what south carolina could offer him on in that space in fact i think on his like commitment edit if you will the commitment photo it had you know uh a advertisement for something that he would be marketing in south carolina so in this situation michigan is kind of behind the curb if you will in terms of NIL money and what they've been able to offer or not to offer to people. I remember a couple of years ago, Jim famously said uh, going to Michigan is transformational and not transactional. Of course, other teams that were doing negative recruiting took that and ran with it like, oh, you're not going to be able to do anything in terms of the NIL space at Michigan. And it really makes no sense for Michigan to be in this situation, being that they have one of the top five you know alumni bases in the country they are one of the top two or three schools at least public schools in terms of their endowment and they compete with private schools some of the the better known private schools in terms of their yearly endowment so it's not about michigan not having money it's about how they're willing to allocate those funds more so than having them in a collective like this an initiative like this should help them to jumpstart that nil program and really get kids um paid really that's basically what it comes down to and i'm not saying that you know the recruiting comes down to just getting kids paid but it doesn't hurt right it cannot hurt in that space so We'll see what happens with this. Jim Harbaugh is actually going to be hitting the road himself. I think trips to Grand Rapids, Chicago, New York, L.A., just to name a few. I think I think those are the first kind of cities that they're going to be basically going out, speaking with alumni and others to try and get monies into this collective. They are expecting multi, multi-million dollars into the collective. So having the head coach be the face and voice of it should not hurt let me know in the comment section what you guys think what you guys think of nil period what you guys think of michigan's ability to move in that space 
what you guys think Michigan can do. I think a lot of schools are really afraid of schools like Michigan really, you know, going headfirst into the NIL space because of the money that a school like Michigan can generate. So let me know in the comment section what you think. Moving along, though, Michigan picked up uh, several crystal balls on Saturday, including crystal balls for four-star offensive tackle Bennett Warren. Bennett Warren, of course, the six foot seven, three hundred and thirty pound beast of a man, as you can see in these clips here. And it didn't stop with Bennett Warren. But speaking of Bennett Warren, let's talk a little bit about Bennett Warren. Like I said, six foot seven and a half, three hundred and thirty pounds out of Sugarland, Texas. He is the eighty fifth ranked prospect overall, the sixth, the fifth ranked offensive tackle in the country. And the 14th ranked player in the state of Texas, the recruiting has really come down to Michigan and Texas A&M, but Michigan seems to have taken the lead, at least of late, picking up two crystal balls just on Saturday. So hopefully this thing manifests itself into Warren picking Michigan when the time comes. I feel strongly about it. He obviously was there for his official visit. Sharon Moore really locking in those offensive linemen along Michigan's offensive line, right? Like the trenches are really a place where Michigan is doing great work in this 2024 class. And we'll get to the defensive side of the ball in just a second. But we already know what they've been able to do so far along the offensive line with Luke Hamilton, Ben Roebuck, right? Uh, Sprague. It just, the list goes on and on. And adding somebody like Bennett Warren to that would just solidify what they've already been able to solidify along the offensive line. Back to back Joe Moore award winners, transfer portal stars coming in along the offensive line. So it's really deep in that offensive line room. And hopefully it doesn't stop there in terms of just the offensive line room right moving on though michigan also received crystal balls for dominic nichols the defensive edge out of maryland the four-star edge 6'5, 245 pounds out of imesville maryland he is the 429th ranked player in the country the 29th ranked edge in the country and the 13th ranked player in the state of maryland according to 24 7 composite ranking this one is a little interesting because michigan received i think multiple two crystal balls three crystal balls just in the last two days for uh dominic nichols who had received a crystal ball before that for wisconsin luke fickle and company had done a good job of kind of selling him on coming to wisconsin but it looks like he is still Michigan strong, and that is excellent news for the Wolverines because Brian Robinson was seen at an Ohio State camp or something like that, and he's talking about wanting to get that offer from the other state. And, of course, he's from Ohio. He's not far from Columbus at all. So it's really weird what's going on with Brian Robinson. There are some in the Michigan fandom that think Kentucky is in the lead. In fact, my guy Antoine Antoine Johnson is one who thinks that Kentucky is in the lead and he is done with trying to, you know, pursue Brian Robinson. Me, myself, personally, I am not, though. I think Brian Robinson would be a huge addition to Michigan's 2024 class as he is a complete beast. He looks like a destroyer out there, and I would love to have him in the class. But moving on, Michigan also received crystal balls for David Polly Polly out of Pennsylvania. He's a three-star defensive lineman out of Landisville, Pennsylvania. He was considered a Penn State lean earlier in the recruitment, but Michigan has really come on strong. He's 6'3", 288 pounds, the 54th ranked defensive lineman in the country and the 16th ranked player in the state of Pennsylvania. Again, only a three-star. However, I would be the first to say very underrated. I've seen the film. He is not a three-star talent. 
However, he is rated as a three star. So that's what they have him as. That's what we have to go with right now. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about what Michigan gained. Michigan picked up a commitment from Wayful right this past weekend on Saturday. He committed to the Wolverines. So congratulations to Mr. Owen Wayful for that. He is out of Princeton, New Jersey. You may remember he was a Notre Dame commit. He obviously flipped that commitment to Michigan, which is a huge win. Again, taking recruits from Notre Dame and the other state is just a win-win. We're, we're taking from them, adding to ourselves, but it's just a little extra in there when it's those two schools, for me anyway. Uh, throw in little bro them too. Taking from them, adding to ourselves is also very pleasing for me. Anyway, he is, if you look at the tape, is a beast as well. Four-star defensive lineman. So Michigan really on fire with this last uh, official visit weekend. They did a great job by all accounts in their recruitment of five-star Justin Scott, who may be having things to think about now that he visited Michigan. Five-star defensive lineman Justin Scott out of Illinois, who was considered early on to be a Notre Dame lock. Then Miami got involved, and they start throwing around their dollars. Obviously, we know that can change minds. And, you know, it's Miami, right? Who wouldn't want to walk the beach on your off days, right? Whatever. Uh, then he visited. He had an official to Georgia, I believe, who really impressed him as well. So right now, I would say Miami and Notre Dame probably have the lead. Michigan and Georgia, obviously, with these official visits, have been impressive to Mr. Scott. Hopefully, he would like to keep it a little closer to home, and that would eliminate Georgia and Miami, but it would put Notre Dame very much in play. We'll see what happens. Keep it locked to the channel for more updates on that. Michigan also picked up a commitment from three-star linebacker Jaden Smith out of North Carolina, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. In fact, West Charlotte, he is a six foot three, two 201 pounder he was transitioning from outside linebacker they believe he'll be transitioning rather to outside linebacker at the next level he said quote i'm going to michigan i chose this because they showed a lot of love they can improve me as a man and as a player and get me better he chose the wolverines over the likes of usc Utah and others so shout out to that young man Michigan continuing to grow the class I believe up to 19 commits now firmly in that number two spot behind Georgia in terms of the class rankings but we'll keep you updated as more information becomes available the Wolverines also had a couple a few members of the potential defensive backfield on campus as four star out of ohio glenville bryce west was accompanied by michigan commit jacob odin and michigan target four star safety boo carter as well as michigan target four star safety jordan johnson rubel out of img academy by way of Texas. All four of those guys seem to be enjoying themselves and each other, especially Boo Carter, Bryce West, Jacob Odin. Those three seem to have a real genuine friendship. And Jordan Johnson Rubel, who is kind of the Michigan coaches, rather, Jay Harbaugh and Steve Klinkscale have kind of Pitch to him being that sort of viper or all around type safety in the Michigan defense, sort of like Jabril Peppers, which is ironic because he actually made a tweet to Jabril Peppers as that was one of his favorite players coming up to watch. And Jabril Peppers was able to tweet him back. So that was a big moment for Jordan Johnson Rubel, the four star out of IMG Academy. I don't think there are there are no crystal balls in for Jordan Johnson Rubel or for Boo Carter or Bryce West for Michigan. However, I do 
know from all accounts that Michigan really did a great job of recruiting all of them. Jordan Johnson Rubel said as much, saying that before he only had one day to visit Michigan, and this OV allowed him to meet a lot of the coaches and see more things than obviously he did in one day, and that Michigan has really set the bar for him in terms of the OVs. So that is great news for Michigan. Bryce West, of course, at one point was considered to be a Michigan lean, but then of late for most of this recruitment period has been an Ohio State lean. And that I don't think has necessarily changed. However, Michigan was able to show him some things and hopefully he takes from that something positive. And if Michigan can land him, that would be amazing. He is currently like the second or first ranked. I think he and Aaron Scott jostle back between first and second ranked player in the state of Ohio. Speaking of Aaron Scott, he'll be visiting this upcoming weekend. So that's exciting news as well. And then there's Boo Carter. Boo Carter, who seemed to be enjoying himself like no other on the visit, was actually, is actually in a, or Michigan is in a heated race with Tennessee for his commitment. It looks like Tennessee, I believe, does have a crystal ball. However, Michigan was able to really show what they can do and put their best foot forward. So hopefully they did enough and Michigan can get that commitment. That would be massive. He and Jacob Odin are really good friends as well as Bryce West. Jacob Odin and Bryce West are also really good friends. And Jacob Odin, after the official visit, said that he's confident that Michigan can land both of those players. Whether or not that is true, it remains to be seen. But Nobody would have more information than him, right? So hopefully what he is saying is accurate and Michigan can land another blow to their rival, the other state, by taking Bryce West out of the state of Ohio and out of the other state factory in Glenville run by Ted Ginn Sr. So we'll see what happens, though. I'll keep you posted as more information becomes available. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this might be our best season ever. My ratings, they're about to go through the roof. All right, all right, right. Now, now I'm going to calm down, son. I'm going to calm down, son. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't get that, all that mace and that lock and all that puzzle. I just don't get it, son, okay, for just, real. Just calm and down. how the f*** 